freedom for all. Radio for all. You are now live with the Humble Prince on Sahara FM Radio. Yeah. We're back. Live with the Humble Prince, Sahara FM Radio. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us. Again, I just want to say that tonight's show is brought to you by the law offices of Bolan Lee Mayowa. Please go to their website at um, www.mayowalaw.com and also by Tribex Vomos Communications. Their website is www.tribex.vomos.com. For the best rates to call Nigeria, three cents a minute. You guys can't beat that. So those of you that have um, you know, your girlfriends and fiancés in Nigeria, call. <laughs> Calling cards are played out. Yeah, go to tribex.vomos.com. And also, Build Brand You. Uh, that's a website that helps college students, especially those of you in your first year of college that don't know where you're going. Go to that website. It will really help you out. It's focused and everything. Uh, that's www.buildbrandyou.com. The purveyor of that is Winella Reed, who's actually going to be a guest on the show. But right now, we're joined by the uh, Sahara superstar herself, um, Adela Fainio, keeping it real. Let's, uh, let's give her a round of applause. You don't have to clap for yourself. We'll clap for you. <laughs> Oh, it's you. And of course, friend to the house and Mr. Controversy himself. And I like, I like his new title. No, um, Dan Jimmer, please. What was that new title you, um, you, you said? Uh, wait, wait. Culture critic. And social activist. <laughs> social activist. You know, I noticed I just put activist. He replied, no. no. Social <laughs> activist. Please, let's welcome Dan Jimmer to the house, man. <laughs> guys, uh, thank you very, thank you so, much. very much. Uh, we, of course. Um, um, and tonight, um, guys, we'd like to hear from you. The number to call is 646-559-6640, extension 3. Control room, you hear that? You didn't have to remind me in my air to say extension three. I got it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, and of course, we're talking about the ongoing um, Ebola saga, the Ebola virus epidemic, of course. Um, but before we start, let's just give Nigeria a round of applause again. We were like the harbinger of containing the virus uh, declared by the and World Senegal. Health. And Senegal. And Sen Senegal. Yeah. Uh, did Oh, they, have, they had some cases, and now oh, they they're, they're Ebola free as well. Absolutely. Oh, and wow. I know we're, we're, all, we're, all, we're always into our own, <laughs> <our> own Kool-Aid. <laughs> yeah, <Nigeria. But> <laughs> believe it or not, there are other people <laughs> have who well. have contained it as well. But let me ask you this. Is the United States sending representatives to Senegal to find out how they contain the virus? Well, actually, Senegal is the staging uh -oh. area for all U.S. operations uh -oh. in Africa. Sure. So, you know, all the troops they're sending... Yeah. Their, you know, their staging area is in Senegal, is in Dakar. Did they right. send to Nigeria? Um, <laughs> oh, I guess he, I guess he asked that because there's, um, there's oh, word God. that um, they're sending um, their CDC officials to right to Nigeria to see how you we know, um, be in contact with uh, Nigerian health officials to figure out how they were able to contain it so effectively right. and so quickly. So, so it's true. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Do like you sound a bit um, skeptical? No, you, you I, seem I, skeptical about yeah. it. No, no, no. They did a, they did a fantastic skeptical. job containing right. containing it in, in Lagos, we should say. Exactly. We shouldn't say in Nigeria. It's a, you know, um, as one of my friends um, rightfully said, it's, uh, it was kind of a good thing that it, it, it started in Lagos in a city center where they have not only very good hospitals, but also um, a, a, a functioning governor, and right. <laughs> a functioning government, functioning healthcare system, and so you know, it, there's there's also an aspect of luck, you know. So I'm actually not being uh, skeptical. I'm just, I I guess it's very, um, for me, I'm really impressed to hear that the U.S. would impressed. send people to Nigeria to learn some things. So it makes me proud. That's why I was asking if it really happened. Yeah, I think uh, we. I think we did a good job of. Um, I think we did a good job of um, containing the virus, especially given the fact that Nigeria has about 120 million people. Um, Make that 160. Yeah. Or was it I'm 180 like, million? 120? No, it's no, no, no. It's sorry. 160. No, no, sorry. Not Nigeria. I was talking about Lagos itself. Lagos, we, we have, have about 20, 20 million. We have about 20 million people yeah. in Lagos. So, if that virus wasn't contained. It would have been catastrophic, in my opinion. Yeah. So just to go by what he right. said just now, uh, you know that there has been issues with the, the Lagos state government saying that they were the ones that really uh, caught this virus and the, pre the president trying to take credit for it. <laughs> so um, a lot of people have been saying if it's left for Mr. President, uh, it wouldn't have been as effective as it was. At the same time, though, I feel like if it failed, we would blame federal right. government. Exactly. So, I mean, I know it's the Lagos state government, but at the same time, 
we'll, well see how to give you some know kudos. one thing though it, it did come at a price and we give kudos to the nurses the nurse that especially lady especially that the woman doctor, doctor, the doctor Devon. Yeah. yes uh, i mean she's basically like literally sacrificed her life i mean let's face it um i think we had about 20 cases mm -hmm. about maybe what 12 deaths mm -hmm. uh, i'm not sure but um I, i'm not my numbers are fuzzy right now but all the same i'm glad that you know we contained it and um Ebola's no, not. I mean, like I said, we contained it. But what do you think of people? Because you know, I was saying that deal. I was being skeptical. What do you think of people that are saying that? You know what? How are we sure? Because this is Nigeria. You know, we never know. Maybe that uh, it's not really true. Well, because maybe some people are not coming forth. The that way they have, the right. way that they the way that they um, sort of uh, determine it. Determine it. No new cases. Is no new cases right. for for the, what is it? 43, 40, 40, 43 consecutive. Days. days so right. i mean that's a the, the the good thing i guess you could say about the disease is it, it has an incubation period right that it has you know it's not something that you can keep like you know say syphilis or mm -hmm. you know hiv for years before right. it manifests itself exactly. it, yeah. you know it has you know 21 days then you're gonna you know you're gonna see you know signs of the disease yeah. and within you know another couple of days weeks you know, the person is either, you yeah. know, they, they get better or, or they get worse. So yeah. it's not right. something that, you know, they can sort of hide or, you exactly. know, cover or, you know, I, I, you know, I take them at their word. Right. You know, and the problem with this disease is not so much isolated cases. Is an ep epidemic that people are, you know, that are, are worried about, you know. Right, because in, in places like what, um, Liberia Correct. and Guinea, it Correct. took a lot, tons of lives. Correct. And, and I right. think of what we're, while we celebrate, I'm all for celebrating, right. celebrating Nigeria's successes. But as we can tell, it's only about the consecutive days that you go without a new case, right? If somebody eventually ends up in Nigeria from from yeah. any from Liberia, like you know, like um, you know, was it Patrick, Patrick Sawyer, Sawyer? We're back to square one again. Right. And we're, it, we're back to panic mode again. Right. And you know, while we have systems in place to actually make sure that we're not, you know, we don't get, you know, we, we have screening processes in place, you know, for incoming, you know, um, immigrants from other countries it's right. still a very difficult situation to you know to sort of you know put a hold on which is why what's really important is making sure that every country in west africa is ebola free not so much these isolated countries while we right. can celebrate those little victories and now we can go ahead you know with our business like you know oh, we're nigeria we no, we don't have ebola anymore right it's still you know the 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 a lot of the stigma, as you can tell from, you know, Western media and all these people is is a blanket treatment of all of West Africa. True. So so while right. instead of try to uh, trying to educate people on geography, I think that we should try to actually make sure that the disease is, you know, eradicated from all these other countries. Uh, Jilla, what do you want to say? Go ahead. I was going to say, especially since the borders are so porous, like. Yeah, they could, I, I didn't even know they could come in through Ogun State. Through. Yeah, <laughs> I, I read that too, I that some that. people came in through Ogun State and right. they sent them back. Yeah. And right. also, I heard that the uh, case... Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, good. So, um, please, I know we have a caller. Um, this guy's name is actually Dr. Michael Egbejimi David, and he wrote an article on the Sahara Reporters um, okay, dot com article. page. Yeah, that's that the article good. I sent you. And he actually broke down how um, Ebola got to Nigeria yeah. and how Nigeria was able to contain it. So, um, caller, um, doctor, are you there? I am here, yes. Uh, doctor, thank you for joining us all the way from Abuja. A again, uh, I, I thought you wrote a very uh, profound article on the SaharaReporters.com um, website, and the article was about um, uh, how Ebola got to Nigeria. Oh, thank you. Ye yes. Um, before I go any further, please, I'd just like to introduce you to my other panel. Um, I have uh, Mr. Ernest Danjima Carter and um, Adiola Fayoun. Hi. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes, and uh, I just want to say thank you for keeping the, um, the article short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I yeah, yeah because most of the, when Nigerians write, man, they write paragraphs in books. And I, the first thing I did when I saw your article, <laughs> I went to scroll to the end. I just scrolled to the end. I was like, okay, see what we're dealing I, with here. Exactly. I will read this one. Yeah. I actually read it twice, man. So uh, thank you very much. So, doctor, um, we were just talking about the Ebola vi virus, um, like we said, and how Nigeria um, contained it. So, please tell us what you know about it and how it got to Nigeria. And something I found interesting in the article you wrote was that you said. Um, Patrick Sawyer actually came to Nigeria for treatment. I'll let you talk about that. All right. 
the first time I heard about that was actually through his wife, who actually works uh, for a radio station in, in New, New York. York. Yeah, I'm trying to contact there. her to get on the show, too. Correct. Go ahead. Right. So the wife was the first person that mentioned that. Uh, now, when I heard that, I never really thought much about it until I then heard of other people trying to get into Nigeria. Right. And so I said to myself, why are all these people trying to come into Nigeria anyway? I mean, what is so special about Nigeria and Ebola that they're trying to come in here? Now, at the same time, I then went to a meeting. You know, private medical uh, practitioners here were called to... to, to, to we're called into a meeting right. with uh, 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 the, uh, Abuja's uh, health officials. Okay. And in there, we were then brought up to speed about what is going on with Ebola, how you catch it. The whole epidemiology was laid there for us. Mm. And so I said to myself, mm, Abuja is not ready. Let me go and educate myself. So I began to read, I began to Google stuff, I began to research anything I could get my hand on. This was when I then found out uh, what actually happened way back in April right. when our this man, who is now the former uh, Minister for Information, actually said we had a stockpile of vaccines in Nigeria. Hmm. Wow. You know? And we had then, vaccines in Nigeria, really? I, I'm surprised. We had vaccines, Ebola virus vaccines in Nigeria? That's correct. That was what this man said on April the 2nd mm -hmm. of this year. Wow. You know? So, was, so uh, are you questioning the accuracy, or are you saying that this information is what led people to now flock to Nigeria because they felt like, you know, they had a better chance of getting treatment in Nigeria than they did, you know, like, say, in... in, that, in Right. The information that came out of um, of Liberia, especially from their presidency when that man first came here, Patrick Sawyer, cool. if you follow the news then, even their president was saying, oh, no, this man was under quarantine, cool. and he escaped, cool. deliberately escaped. Cool. Now, his wife also said as much that, oh, he went to Nigeria to seek treatment wow. because he knew he would get killed in Nigeria. But absolutely, you know? uh, uh, we have we had we have better we had a better healthcare, and 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 my friend raised the point mm -hmm. about to that effect. Diddles, he said, you don't know. Uh, while he put a lot of people in danger, right? You don't know the extent to which you would go to seek treatment. You know, for a disease. You know, for for for, you know, I guess a terminal disease. Right like that you know until you're that's actually you or your family are actually in contact with it so yeah. you know people the same same thing with the guy who came to america you want you know we don't know if you know that's why he felt you know i have a better chance of getting treatment here right it turned out not to be the case for the guy for the gentleman who came to america but you know the liberian man who came to america but right. you know you want to give yourself a you know a chance you know, yes. and don't yeah. forget on right. like hiv ebola actually has a 21 day um, a, a lifeline. So right. basically, most people with Ebola, okay. between 12 and 21 days, they actually die. Okay. Yeah. So just to buttress your point, you don't know the desperation somebody exactly. would go through. Exactly. Right. Okay. You know, yeah. if somebody could hear from somewhere that, oh, just next door to me, there are vaccines. Right. I could be cured. I could be treated. Correct. Of course, he's going to take that chance, especially if he's a diplomat. Exactly, and he had he had the means to, to you know travel. to buy his way or to you know circumnavigate the yeah. laws or whatever to get right. you know that help. I mean, we you know a lot of us do that all the time. Yeah, for uh, things correct. less for things less serious. So right. uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, I don't forget he ahead. wasn't the only one who came. Right, he wasn't the only one who came from that country. And who's yeah. to say who's to say he's going to be the last? I mean, exactly. they, Nigeria still presents a lot of people in, you know, Guinea, Sierra Leone, and Liberia the best chance to get, you know. I mean, I'm not, right. you know, advocating for that, but, you know, people yeah. are going, you know, and this is, this, I guess, comes to my point of why we need to actually make sure that not only is it cured, you know, not only do we do it, you know, do we end it in you know, in the, the countries that currently 
you know, uh, uh, Ebola it. free, but you know, ended in yeah. the countries that still yeah. have it. So God. yeah, doctor. So uh, thank you. We have to round up, but uh, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, like I said, everybody, that um, uh, article is on the SaharaReporters.com website. Please go with, um, go there and check it out. And um, the, the, uh, the, the, the writer's name is Doctor Michael Egbejimi David. And uh, thank you so much. And we'll That's definitely call how how Ebola disease got to Nigeria. Yes, fantastic. Uh, doctor, thank you very much. So, um, oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes. So, um, Diana, I know you, you were very quiet um, during that um, segment. Uh, do you want, what, what do you have to say to that? Because I noticed when he said um, that, uh, Nigeria had vaccines. Did you? What did you think about that? <laughs> did you really she seems have... like she's very skeptical of yeah. Nigeria generally. <laughs> no, I'm not. But you need to know Lavaran Mafu. Did we really have the vaccines for Ebola? I mean, I agree with what he said that we have better medical facilities and stuff. But mm -hmm. did we really have the vaccines for Ebola? For you to go and be saying and that we have va vaccine when you know that people would people that have been affected would it be was interested. It was, it was irresponsible. Right. I mean, we can boast that we have good facilities and stuff like that, but when we had the, when Dr. Ali Devon was dying, they were begging America for the vaccine. If we had the vaccine, why That's what I thought. then Honestly, we use so it for our own for people? Our own people right. So I don't, I don't, I th did, so did we really, I don't think we really cured anybody. Did we really cure? No, we, I mean, do we, we just contain it. I don't think don't, we use anything don't. special. Special. The but people the were problem healed. With, the problem with Ebola, that it yeah. is, part, part of it is, news is is the the way it's reported there are more people you know that are getting cured by you know sure. of of the disease and you know there are cases sure. of people who you know are in contact and are, provide, are, provi early, right? are providing care for you know people with the disease that are not you know contacting the disease right so there, there are numerous stories that are being ignored or left out of the storyline right so there's a more in successful favor, rate. in favor yes not especially now and and what i just read not too long ago is the people who have actually been cured of the disease right so when you hear of blood transfusions and and a lot of people are like you know what what does blood transfusion have to do with anything when people actually successfully beat the disease their yeah. bodies find their bodies develop the immunity. immunity right so that's when, what it so, is and that's so what they're those trying to create people the vaccine actually as well. create those people are probably the best people to provide care and a lot right. of people are actually doing that now is a lot of people those are the best people to either provide care for the people who still have right. the disease or give or, blood. or give blood you know and so instead of ostracizing those people who have it uh, as has been the case in a lot of communities in west africa if you look just look at the news i mean now we've started um africa responds which is you know uh, um this initiative that we just launched today right you know to try to get you know people i, I it's a multi-dimensional sort of effort to get you know to, to tackle not only the the grassroots effort to actually cure the disease but to also provide support for you know local you know uh people who are pro you know providing care for for people outside of you know major city centers okay you know providing equipment for them providing actually you know uh, uh resources for the the families of those who are affected you know who have who have been left orphaned and whatnot by right by the disease so it's a multi-dimensional effort okay. that we're providing how can we get so, do you like go ahead because we have to round up but go ahead I was just going to say, I, I don't think we had anything special when we were treating people in Nigeria. I think I most of the patients, it depended on the state of their bodies, even before the virus. Right. Uh, because some people were able to fight it, and some people, they just had really weak uh, yeah. immunity system. Yeah. And um, somehow some people survived it. Right. And because a lot of people had been blaming the U.S. with the Liberian guy that died here, mm -hmm. that they didn't give him the medicine on time before he died. And I'm like, well, we had some survivors in Nigeria. They didn't really get any special vaccine. They That's just, true. You know, so I don't know if you can blame right. the U.S. Oh, but that. like uh, people are saying on the Sahara page, um, with God, all things are possible. And it was a God intervention, <laughs> so we never know. Well, I haven't said that. I wish that Dr. Adi Devon... <laughs> lived i Amen. mean definitely so right real quick but the, you, his website yes um dan Jamal, we're going to talk about that in the humble prince round table segment but please okay. how can we get more information on that initially um, if you guys so started? africa responds at africa responds or africa dot org right um it's a coalition of a bunch of different uh organizations here right. and underground and where it's it's growing underground it's, where in liberia and okay. sierra leone and guinea where you know any african organization everywhere any ally of Africa, any, you know, um, 
anybody doing work on Africa or right. related to Africa, we invite them to join us. And, you know, we're building, you know, the strongest coalition that's uh, of its kind. And, and we're going to tackle not only Ebola now, but, you know, for the, you know, for the long term, any, you know, problems that might, you know, arise in Africa, you know, be it flood in Nigeria or, or famine in, you that's know, okay, Sudan yeah. or wherever, we want to be ready, you know, so that, you know, the, the Western media isn't painting the story. They're not, they're not ahead of the curve. We want to be in control of actually telling the story and, you know, taking care of these problems instead of having, you know, saviors come and, you know, tell us. Fantastic. You know, we could, we, this is time, man. We could definitely do it. Um, Dilla, real quick, I know you t there was a story about Rwanda screening United American citizens. Yeah, now they're, <laughs> I, now they're screening I, I U.S. citizens it. and people from Spain. Spain. We, I, I think it's great because they screen us too. I don't know. I don't uh, see why we shouldn't uh, screen come on, them. Come on, man. One, one yeah. case. I mean, if, so? if, if, they are, if they are people from, from Dallas, Texas. <laughs> well, because how, I mean, how the, many the cases in the U.S. was in that city? How so many cases do we have in the U.S.? Do you know now if you're coming well, from I, any I, of I these countries? I don't necessarily like the tit for tat, but you know, if if we're gonna do it, let's then at do least it. do it right. Let's yeah. do it. Let's do what they're not doing. But now, you know, if it, you're coming from any of these countries, now you have to fly into one of five airports. Like, correct. Well, really? it, that wasn't really a big change though, because those are the these were the most airports that 95 percent of the people came from anyway. No, no, no. The, in, yeah, into the up, U.S. What, what they're doing is they're Newark, saying JFK planes Newark? from from you know connecting flights for Africans coming in can only come to a certain number of ports okay, in ports. America. That's yeah. a that's a new that's a Huge drastic change. Drastic change. Five Huge airports. Influence. Newark. Yeah. Who goes to Newark? I mean, sorry. Oh, <laughs> I love actually Newark Guys. has Newark has one of the best airports I know, in the United it's a States. Very very. Yeah. Convenient uh, guys, uh, there you have it. Uh, thank you so much. So again, you know, big round of applause to Nigeria. We contained the virus. Uh, you know, Nigeria gets a bad rap on a lot of things. So when we do good, we, we should be uh, um, definitely applauded. Good job to Lagos. Good yeah. job to Fashola. Fantastic, man. So uh, we're going to take a break real quick. And when we come back, um, we're going to have the Humble Prince Roundtable. And we're going to talk about the Centenary Awards uh, that took place last month. Uh, we're going to give an update on that. And uh, I'm going to be joined by Jimeji and um, Prince Chris. Uh, where am I do? Uh, and we're going to be talking about the 2015 um, elections. Oh, boy. Yeah, Can't Nigeria wait. presidential elections. Um, Danjima, you're hanging around, right? Absolutely. Yeah. No partiality. We have one Yoruba, <laughs> one, his, one um, Hausa, and uh, one Igbo. Both two Yorubas with me. Uh, we'll be right, right back, guys. All right. Surprise, surprise. You would do